Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Hello and welcome to Sunday School. My name is Shane Friesen and I'm a teacher at the Altona Sommerfeld Mennonite Church in Manitoba, Canada. I welcome each and every one who is tuning in today and uh, I hope you're all doing well even though we're living through the COVID pandemic right now. Um, I hope you're still feeling blessed and I'm encouraged and feeling blessed because we can still provide Sunday School lessons even though it's not in the way that we normally would do things, I'm still grateful that we can preach the Word of God to whoever wants to hear. And so I welcome you and I thank you for joining us. I would encourage everyone to get a Bible to follow along with us as we look at specific verses. Let's begin. I don't know exactly what it is about fires, but I love staring into them as they burn in a fire pit. And now that spring is here and summer's on its way, a lot of us will be enjoying bonfires and wiener roasts and going camping and having fires there. I thought it might be interesting to learn about uh, something that God teaches us about fires in the Bible. Well, not fires exactly, but the smoke that comes from them. So in today's Sunday School lesson, I want to talk about smoke and prayers. So because God and his kingdom is so amazing and awesome, and it's actually it's hard for us to understand, he has given us a bunch of help throughout the Bible um, so that we can get a pretty good idea, a better understanding maybe the best kind of understanding we can get with our limited brains about who he is and about what he wants from us. Uh, one example is from the first lesson that I gave on the video where we were talking about sin. And we were looking at Psalm 103 verse 12 where it says that God will remove our sin as far as the east is from the west. Well, that is an image that he's given to us. An image to help us understand how far God will go to delete our sins. Another way of saying that would be to say, God removes our sins completely and forever. So that image is helpful for us to try and comprehend how good God is to us. And today I want to talk about another powerful image that God has left us with in the Bible. And it's talked about in the Old Testament, lots, and it's also talked about in the New Testament too. And so I wanted to teach about that today so that we can come to a better understanding of something that maybe we don't always think about or don't think about very often. Uh, so as you're watching me say these words, you're probably noticing a lot of smoke coming in front of my face. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So in order to help with the visual of the lesson, I have some incense burning here in front of me. And so uh, I want to teach about how God relates the idea of our prayer to being like smoke rising up. So let's learn about how God teaches us that smoke is like our prayers. Let's turn first to the book of Luke, chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, Matthew, Mark, Luke, there we go, chapter 1, verses 5 to 12. Now this is a story that we read very often, and we actually probably as a church read it uh, 
of every year, but not necessarily with the focus that we're going to use today. So let's read verses 5 to 12. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. Now, does this ring any bells? Whose parents are we talking about? I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. If you said that these were the parents of John the Baptist, you were correct. So let's read on. Verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And uh, that's what I'm burning here on my table. This is incense. When you think about incense, you should think about smoke. But you should also think about smell. Incense always has an aroma, which is usually sweet and pleasant. And so that's what, when they talk about incense in the Bible, those are the two things you should think about. Verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. So Zacharias had the privilege, he, he had the lot given to him, which was a great honor to go and burn incense and during the time of the incense burning, everyone outside was praying. That's the image that we're given. Verse 11, And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. The altar of incense is something we're going to learn about in a few minutes. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. So, so far in Luke. So we've, get, we've been given a really nice image of what Zacharias was doing that day when the angel visited him. He was burning incense on the altar of incense. So now let's go learn about the altar of incense um, and uh, what that looked like and uh, what uh, we're supposed to think about when we think about the altar of incense. So let's turn to Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, verses 1 to 8. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon, of shittim wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. So a cubit is about 20 inches. So the, this altar of incense was about 40 inches tall, which is a little bit taller than your kitchen than your kitchen countertop. And it's about 20 inches square. Verse 3, And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof, round about and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. So this was a precious thing, the altar of incense. It was made strong with a wood structure, but that wood was covered in pure gold. So this was very precious indeed. And as we'll see in a bit, um, it's precious for a reason. It's covered in gold for a reason. So verse 4, And two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it, shalt thou make it. And they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. So that verse they're talking about how to carry the altar from one location to another. Because they weren't supposed to touch it with their hands, so they made it so you could carry it with poles. 
and thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. So even the poles that were to carry it were covered with gold. Verse 6, And thou shalt put it there before the veil, that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat, that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. So the location is very important. Um, it was located in the holy place, which is in the temple or in the tabernacle, before the temple was built. And so there were three major components within the holy place. Um, as you looked from the door coming in, you would look on your left and there would be a menorah of uh, candles or lamps. And on the right would be a table of showbread. And straight ahead, right before the entrance to the Holy of Holies, was this altar of incense. It was right in front of the door, or the door, so to speak, which was a, a curtain, right in front of the, the Holy of Holies. And Aaron, verse 7, shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense, incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. So a key thing to recognize from these verses, um, number one, the altar of incense was very precious. It was covered in pure gold. Uh, number two, its location. It was located right outside the place where God would uh, come down to earth to meet the people of Israel. And so, what is it that was so special about this altar of incense? And why was it, um, why was it placed so near to where God, God was? So let's turn to Psalm 141 verse 2 to find our answer. Psalm 141, verse 2. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So, the altar of incense and the smoke and the fragrance coming off of it <clears throat> was an image to the Israelite people of their prayers. Their prayers going to be with God. That was this great image that they had. It was the closest thing to God in the temple. And uh, every day they saw this incense smoke rising up in the temple grounds from the holy place. In the, every morning and every evening, the people saw this incense smoke rising up and uh, wafting through the temple grounds. And as it was rising up, the people were also praying together with the incense smoke. So it's an image that God gave us, um, first of all, of how our prayers come to him and that they will be in his presence, which is awesome. That's, um, it's amazing to think that the most powerful being in the world wants us to know that he will hear our prayers to him. And second of all, what we can learn is that uh, God instructed his people to pray twice a day. Officially, twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. And uh, they, he did this by telling them they had to light the incense twice a day. And also, while it was lit, they were supposed to pray while the incense is going. So that's also a good lesson for us, because I wonder how many of you would pray twice a day like that. Um... I think it's a good lesson and reminder for us that the expectation from God is um, perpetual prayer. Perpetual prayer, morning and evening and throughout the day as you need to. So now let's turn 
to the New Testament where it also talks about these things. Um, let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Reve Revelation is the last book of the Bible. Chapter 5, verse 8. Chapter 5, verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, that's Jesus, the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, or also known as incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Now if you were in this room with me and the smoke was wafting around your head like it is for me, you would smell a sweet smell and uh, so it's it's uh, helps the helps me to imagine uh, what they're talking about here in the book of revelation where it said that the 24 elders had vials of incense so that means this smoky incense was right beside god right beside god's throne and then it actually specifies that that incense was the prayers of believing Christians, the prayers of the saints. So that's a powerful image given to us that our prayers make it right to where God is so that he can, he can hear them. And let's look again at uh, chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints, pardon me, of all saints, upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. So now we're told again how the, the smoke, which, and the smoke of the incense, which was our prayers, wafts up in the throne room right to God so that he personally can hear and answer our prayers. That's a wonderful comfort to me and I think to you or a lot of other people to know how special God thinks you are, that he is willing and desirous to hear your prayers and that, uh, that they will go straight to his ear. They won't go through anybody else. They'll go straight to his ear. That's what he tells us. And that's wonderful to me. So let's summarize some of the key things we learned from these passages of scriptures. Number one, uh, we learned from where the location of this golden altar of incense is in the temple and in the tab tabernacle, that in order to come close to God, we do it through prayer. He placed that altar right beside where he would come down to meet Israelites and that's an indication that tells us teaches us that to come to him we do it by prayer number two he expected the Israelites to pray twice each day and that's something that I would encourage all of you to try as well so this week was ascension and the story of ascension relates to the topic today as well believe it or not um, you see, when Jesus ascended, he ascended to sit at the right hand of God. And we know this <clears throat> from the story of Stephen's death, which is in Acts chapter 7. <clears throat> Acts chapter 7, verses 55. 56. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, that's Stephen, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So Jesus, after he ascended, which uh, we remembered this last week, he went to, to sit 
or to be at the right hand of God, which is the closest and most powerful position in heaven. And so, why did Jesus go there specifically? Well, it's because he has a job right now. And it's a job for us, actually. <clears throat> and so, let's read Hebrews 7.25 to learn what Jesus is doing at the right hand of God. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So that's talking about what Jesus is doing. Wherefore, Jesus, we could say, is able to also to save them to the uttermo uttermost that come unto God by him, which is Jesus, seeing he ever liveth, that's Jesus ever liveth, to make intercession for them, for us, for me, for you. So intercession is a big word and it's a strange word. And even as adults, we have to think a little bit about what it actually means. Um, I think the simplest way to put it is that Jesus is talking to God about you. And he's saying to God, you know, this person, that is one of my lambs. That's one of my sheep. And I really love them. And um, I'm going to ask you, Father, to please protect them and, uh, and keep them for me. And so, isn't that awesome? So in addition to your prayers, the things that you're asking for and desiring and wanting and and want to talk to God about, Jesus is also talking to God about probably some of those things, but also other things that he sees that are going to be a problem for you. And he's talking to God to help you, to intercede for you. And then we can read uh, also in Romans 8, verse 34. Romans 8.34 Who is he that con condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So there is a second passage that talks about Jesus interceding for us, or talking to God on our behalf, praying for us. You could say it like that too. And in the beginning of verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. That is so amazing. If you are a Christian, look how good you have. Look how blessed you are. First of all, your prayers, like this smoke rising in front of me, it rises up to God and it'll rise up right in front of him so that he can see your prayer, he can hear what you're asking for. That's so special, so amazing. And now we learn that in addition to that wonderful news, Jesus also is whispering in God's ear right beside him, like, like this chair here to my right. Jesus is sitting there beside God, and he's also whispering. He says, you know, you see that prayer over there from that, that lamb of mine? I would love it if you would answer that prayer for that lamb. That's awesome. I don't know what else I can say about it. Let's uh, also uh, think about one more thing before we end our lesson today. Um, so we have the idea that our prayers are coming before God. Uh, we have the idea that Jesus is talking to God for us, praying for us as well. And if that wasn't good enough, we have one more positive thing to learn today. Let's turn to Romans 8, verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So here he's talking about the Holy Spirit. 
fantastic. We have our prayers are rising up before God, like this incense smoke is rising up before my face. We have Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, interceding, praying for us as well. And now we have the Holy Spirit, who knows us so well because he's inside of us, he's in our hearts. He knows us, and even when we don't know what to ask for or to pray for, he is praying on our behalf to God the Father. It's just amazing. We are so blessed as Christians. In closing, could you please join me for a prayer? Father in heaven, we are truly blessed. We thank you for all your goodness to us. Thank you for the promise that you will hear our prayers. Thank you for the promise that our prayers will rise up like smoke before you, that you will see them personally. Thank you for the promise that Jesus is at your right hand, interceding for us, praying for us, um, talking to you about us, loving us. Thank you for the promise that even when we don't know what to ask for or to pray for, we as Christians um, can know that the Holy Spirit also prays to you on our behalf. Thank you again for these good things. Please, please help us to understand them better, to know them, to think about them, and to praise you for them. I also want to thank you, Father, for all those who are listening to this lesson. Please bless them for um, taking the time to study, study your word, to learn about you. Uh, I pray that each one will feel blessed in their life. And uh, please plant your word that was spoken today into their hearts, um, that it may someday uh, grow up and produce fruit of the Spirit, which uh, can benefit us and uh, bring more praise to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. Before we finish today, I wanted to leave you with a couple of things to do throughout the week. Number one, I want you to make a picture for me or a craft that uh, shows what we learned today. Something about how your prayers rise up like smoke into the presence of God. And show it to your parents and see what they think about it. And if they didn't uh, follow along in the Sunday school lesson with you, then explain to them how, what that picture means. And lastly, I want to give you a verse to memorize. And let's take it from Revelation chapter 8, verse 4. Revelation chapter 8, verse 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Thank you very much. So I hope the Sunday School lesson was interesting to you and that you learned something. And this summer, when you see smoke rising from a fire somewhere, I hope that it reminds you of how your prayers can rise up into heaven, into the presence of God. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears run down your cheeks unbidden? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Have your sins that to men's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend.
friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other, such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there.